There he says, Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. And that the apostle Paul does that same idea in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, for I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The idea is that there's nothing else to know. I do not want your faith to rest in the wisdom of man, but in the essence that is in Christ Jesus. Everything I want for you to have is wrapped up in Christ that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now here is the Apostle Paul, and, he, and I want to look in first chapter 9, verse number 1. I mentioned, I think it was last week, the idea that the Apostle Paul wrote this whole letter, and throughout this letter, he was battling with the idea that there were some who were saying he was a, a Johnny come lately. He was a not somebody. He was not a ranking person. He was not uh, like Peter, uh, James, John, uh, you know, Andrew, uh, the, those ones that were the apostles. He was just a, a just somebody who showed up late and, and he would say, I'm least of the apostles. I mean, I, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. We, we find that even the Apostle Paul uh, made sure that people understood he was uh, not thinking more highly of himself than he ought to think. He was one called out of due time. I mean, he was not, you know, he was not with the Lord in the days when the Lord was walking the earth and all those things, matter of fact. Uh, so he, he asked this question in uh, verse chapter 9 and verse number 1. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are ye not my work in the Lord? He says, uh, If I be not an apostle to, unto others, yet doubtless I am ye, for the zeal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. So my answer to them that do examine me is this. So then he goes on to the, his, uh, just to show them, Hey, listen, if I'm an apostle, then why shouldn't I be able to have the same privileges of the other apostles? Now, if I'm not an apostle to anybody else, I am to you. That's what he tells them. And so he deals with that, but he deals with it through the whole letter. And, uh, you know, you, you know the account of how he got called and, and saw, uh, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if any be found of that advance this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them about to Jerusalem. And you know what happened? Happened. And uh, he found that he fell into the earth as uh, the bright light was shining around. Suddenly there was a shining around about him, a light from heaven. He fell into the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and, and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men journeyed with him, and he stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no man. So they, they'd heard this, and uh, they'd heard this voice. Paul had happened to see uh and the, the, the Lord there in His light, and, and the Lord in all of His glory, in all of His glory, He'd seen Him, and here He is hearing the Lord speak, and so He says, "Am I not an apostle? Y'all want to debate this thing?" If I'm not anybody else, because there's people coming in and telling these in Corinth, Paul's a nothing. Paul's a nobody. And so I want us to look and see 
this thing throughout this book, how Paul deals with this, even from the beginning of the first Corinthians, in his declaration to them of his call to be an apostle. In chapter 1, he says, where he, gives, he declares this, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sought them through the will of God. He says, I've been called by God. He declares his apostleship. Am I not an apostle? I've declared it already in the beginning of this letter. I am an apostle. God called me. Let me say this. The doctrine of election. God calls. God has a, calls us to be certain things to serve him. One, well, we know that where the, it's mentioned um, in the book of Romans, chapter 9, the Bible says the elder shall serve the younger. And he said that it was so that the purpose of election would stand, that God chose Esau to serve Jacob. Esau never did that. Paul says, I've been called to do this, and this is what I'm going to do. Can I say that that is what election is? Just to hit on that real quick, like the whole idea of God calling, God choosing. God has a place for you and a place for me in the church. And Paul said, my place in the church is that I am an apostle. That's what Paul's place was. Now mine's not an apostle. I'm not an apostle. I am the pastor, I am the bishop, I understand all those things. But Paul said, I'm declaring to you this one simple thing, I am an apostle. But then we find already in verse number 11 of chapter 1, they're starting to dispute this thing. This, there's an argument going on. Now they, for it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by the inventor of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am a Paul. I am a Paulus. I am, I am of Christ. Or I'm of Seth, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? He wanted them to understand, listen, y'all might dispute some things amongst you, but I've never claimed to be more than an apostle. I've not claimed to be the head of your salvation. I've not claimed to be the greatest guy in the whole world. I've just been called an apostle. And just like Apollos has a position, Cephas has a position, Christ is everything. Was Paul baptized, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. I'm just an apostle. I am not, now let me say it. That is a high position. But Paul was not looking at his high position. He was looking at, that's just what I am. I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. He says that later on. He, try, he tries to deal with, this is who I am, and this is what God has called me to do. And I want us to understand this very truth is um, that this debate of, are you anything or are you nothing has gone on about me and God's people and God's men for years and years and years. And Paul has to deal with this. Matter of fact, in Numbers chapter 12, in Numbers chapter 12, I find Moses. Moses ended up having to de be defended as his position in the in service of God. Leviticus Numbers, Numbers 12. I'm going to turn over there so I can show this to you. But there, did you not remember that Moses had two, uh, a brother and a sister? And uh, Mary and Aaron spake against Moses because the Ethiopian woman he had married, or he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath not he spoken to us by us, by, or also by us? And the Lord heard. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were above upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly to Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and, uh, and called Aaron, Aaron and Miriam.
And they both came forward. And hear now my words. If there be a prophet among ye, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak uh, mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speech, in the similitude of... So, but do you notice they're, they're up there saying, is he the only one? And aren't we just as good as he is? I want you to understand that in... That has happened back then. It was happening in Moses' day and age. And it happens today. I have a friend of mine. And I call him a friend. Great mechanic. Great blessing to the to the preachers. And great blessing to, uh, to, to any church and anybody, any Christian. And he, I mean, he's a great mechanic and a great encourager, a giver. But he had one little problem. That's what he was. He was a mechanic and a giver. You say, well, that sounds like a good thing. Not if your daddy was a pastor. And you messed up some things in your life. And you want to be in a position where everybody saw you as their equal. Not if you hung out with preachers and they and they get in a preacher's conversation and you felt like you were left out because you were not a preacher, but you think you knew something. And so what did he do? He started, he found he found this issue that he disagreed with these preachers about. And now, and now he has alienated Everybody who loved him, that was preaching. I do not, I, I'm, and uh, I don't talk to him about, but we text back and forth about once every six to eight months. He will text me with some new doctrine. And, he's, and he, I said, what happened? He did not, he was not content being what God wanted him to be. Miriam and Aaron thought more highly of themselves than they ought to think. Paul saying, I should not have to be defending my apostleship to you. I am an apostle with just a position that God has given me. But if I'm not an apostle to you, or if I'm not an apostle to anybody else, I am an apostle to you. So we found that he, 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 their whole argument, they're disputing these things throughout this whole thing. And his, Paul said, listen, I'm not going to fight this. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ, and I've declared it, and I'm now, and it might be disputed, but I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why? Because in me, that is in my flesh, dwell of no good thing, I am nothing of myself. Everything, He, he tells them over in chapter 9. If I'm not an apostle to anybody else, I'm aiming to you. But why did he want, why does he make this determination in chapter 2? Because he does not want it to exalt himself as saying, listen, I'm an apostle and I said this. He said, I want you to understand. There's only one message that any of us have. No matter whether you have the high position in a, as somebody who is a, a great leader. In, in the movement or if you are just the lowliest person in the church. Whether you are the janitor or whether you are the pastor. There's only one message and no, there are no big eyes and little yous. Paul said, that's who I am. He said that I want your ex, I, I want your faith that should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He didn't want to follow an apostle, but focus on Christ. Because men's mindset, here's what men do. This is what this whole church in Corinth is doing. They're arguing about everything. And he's, in men's mindset, their wisdom, now here's what they say. 
Be strong and assertive. Promote yourself. Make yourself out there. Make sure people see you. Make sure you're known. Be, look out for your self-interest because nobody else will look out for you. And so if you don't promote yourself, nobody else will promote you. I remember I went to a job interview. And one of the first things they, they when I got in there and I'm talking to this guy, and he says to me, he says, well, what makes you think that you are, would be better qualified for this job than the other candidates? I scratched my head. I said, I don't. I said, I don't know the other candidates. I have no idea who the other candidates are. Here's what I do know. I know what I can say. I know what I've done. I said, I know these things, but does that make me more qualified? There might be more qualified people. And somebody said, well, you didn't, let, you didn't tell them all great things about you. I said, what's good about me? I'm just another person. I mean, when I went to go become a, tr uh, a trainer for driving, tr uh, to train truck drivers, I went into the interview. And then they said, uh, well, what makes you, um, have you done to prepare for this job? And, and what makes you work, work more important and, and or better for this than somebody else? And I said, um, I pray, ask God, God said that I'm supposed to apply for this job. So I applied for it. Now Susan, who was the lady I interviewed with, she was taken by it. And I did not know what to do. And she did not offer me the job. I said, okie dokie. And I'm like, Lord, I did what I was supposed to do. Well, it just happened to be that God shut the door for anybody. There was five positions to be hired for. God shut the door and she couldn't hire anybody. Nobody, everybody that was planning on going out for the job, back then, she still had five positions to hire. And nobody was wanting a job. And Eric, she said she had plenty of people looking at the job when I went into the interview. Guess what? A month later when she's being told, you gotta hire somebody, they get back home with me. Richard, they want to interview you again. And I said, okay. And I went in. And uh, she told me, she said, listen, I need somebody. I don't think you're the best person for the job. I'm like, okay. She said, but I need you. I said, okay. And guess what? I went to work. You say, what happened? You don't have to exalt yourself. Just God's wisdom is he'll exalt you in due time. You humble yourself under the mighty. That's what Paul would do. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt you in due time. And you say, what, what does that have? So Paul spent this whole letter explaining that Christ is everything and that the Holy Ghost is the answer. And so he, he, here it is in chapter 3, and verse number 5. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I'm an apostle. Now I'm just a minister by whom you believe. He's trying his best to get these people to understand that he's not trying to make himself a somebody even though he has a position. Because there's a dispute in this church. And did you not see how many other disputes there are? And so here he goes through this whole letter dealing with this thing. Uh, I mean, chapter 3 and verse number 10, he makes the statement in uh, chapter 3 and verse number 10, according to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder. I lay, have laid the foundation and another built it thereon, but let everyone take heed how he built it thereupon. I read 
read after some folks and I listen to the folks and they're saying, see, Paul thought of himself as a wise master builder. I said, no, 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 no. Paul didn't think of himself as a wise master builder. He said, I'm a foundation layer. He said, there's a wise master builder called the grace of God that's given me a position as a, uh, as a, a foundation layer and another built it there upon. God is the wise master builder. Paul was not trying to exalt himself. Paul was trying to exalt Christ. If he had said, listen, I'm the wise master builder, guess what he would have been doing? I'm, the, I'm in charge of this thing. Well, no. One lays the foundation, another built it there upon. Who makes the decision of who does what? The master builder. If you ever go to work for somebody, you go to work for a contractor, the contractor says, I want this people to do this job, this people to do this job. You're a plumber, you go over and do plumbing. You're an electrician, you go over and do electricity. You're a laborer, go do some labor. Whatever they, that's the master builder over there, the contractor. The one that lays the foundation is not the master builder. And the grace of God. Because Paul wanted them to understand, I'm an apostle, but to you, if not to anybody else, but what are you disputing about? I'm just one who lays the foundation. That's my job. Who am I? And then so he just goes on to deliver, to deliberate this whole thing in verse of chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. That's what we are. And all that's required of us is that we be found faithful. I don't know what your position is in, in the church necessarily. It does not matter as long as you're found faithful. And Paul says, one that lays the foundation, another built thereupon. Guess what? Everybody's got a position. And yet these ones are over there debating who's who, who's what. And so Paul starts saying, so instead of y'all spending your life trying to judge and try to figure out everything, judge nothing before it's time. Until the Lord come, we will both bring the light to hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the heart. Don't try to figure it all out. Paul said, because I'm not trying to figure it out. All I'm doing is doing what I'm supposed to do. And let me say, that is the Christian life. That Your, your job is not to figure out how somebody else is to do their ministry. My job is not to figure out how you're to do your ministry or do what God had you to do. I had a pastor one time, some guy told, said, went to him and said, well, I think Brother Richard needs to do this, 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 this. And the pastor said, okay. And he looks at him and says, uh, he says, well, you think he does this wrong, this wrong, this wrong? He said, yes. He said, good. He said, he's not under... A, he's not. He's not here as a. Uh, he's here as my associate pastor. He is not here under uh, temporary thing or being a. He said unless he does something that is obviously immoral or wrong, that's his position. And so, uh, basically, they're telling him, "Why don't you worry about your own self? Quit worrying about everybody else. How to do their job? Why? Because God put him in this position." And it's not for us to judge another man's servant. And Paul, that's his whole thing, is y'all are so worried about everybody else that now you even come to the question of, are you even an apostle? Somebody's arguing, are you an apostle? And so he says, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen the Lord or seen Jesus Christ our Lord? On that day on that road to Damascus, did he not see the Lord? He said, are you not my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle and others, yea, doubtless I am to you. And here Paul is trying to make sure that they understand some simple thing. In churches, and I know we're a small group, 
And so it doesn't happen here. But it can happen anywhere. People start, start saying, well, I think so and so. I think such and so. And all of a sudden, everybody's stepping into other people's positions and trying to fix other people. Preacher, I think you need to, I think you need to go get you a, a carry a gun with you at church. That, that, that happened. And I'm like, and why? Well, protect the, protect the people. What if somebody breaks in here? And if somebody breaks in here, guess what? I'm dead. I'm the first person they see. That's just the way that goes. Secondly, I told you, I mean, if they're carrying, why am I worried about it? You shoot them. I don't have to worry about it. I'm just trying to tell you. People start trying to say, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way. They were debating over Paul's apostleship. Now, we look back now, thousands of years later, and we're saying, how could anybody debate that? He's the, he's the apostle who wrote most of the New Testament. Can I say, judge nothing before your time. Just go do what you're supposed to do. Live for God and love God. And if God's called you to be a mechanic and an encourager and giver and an encourager of bread, do that all for the glory of God. And guess what? When it's all said and done, everybody will have been blessed by you being what you're supposed to be. But Esau, he said, I am not going to serve my brother. I'm not going to do it. And Esau looked like he got a blessing but he lost everything. There are no Edomites left. Why? Because they were wiped out. The last Edomite we know of was Herod. And he was ate by worms. Why? Because God destroys those who refuse to be what God wants them to be. Think about that. Because they murmured. And he destroyed, they were destroyed of the destroyer. That's how simple this thing is. And Paul is having to deal with this. I am what I am by the grace of God. I might not be much, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Be what God wants you to be and enjoy it. Even if it's the lowliest person, even if it's all you do. All you do is turn the lights on and off. Even if all you do is turn the heaters on. Enjoy being what God wants you to be. And let me say, don't turn the heaters on today. Hey, man. All right. That's, I, I'm trying to get us to get understand 1 Corinthians. And, and I mentioned that last week. And I just want to show you that this, he's run through this thing throughout this whole thing. I can show you in chapter 7. I can show you in chapter 6. There's so many times that it refers to the, the idea that, listen, this is, this is just my, this is what I am. This is what I do. So just do what you do. Whatever state you're in, there with be content. Enjoy the Lord. If you're called, if you're called unto the Lord a servant, you're God's free man. If you're called unto the Lord a free man, you're God's servant. See how he's, he's trying to deal with this? Just be who you are for the glory of God. Amen. And that's all I want you to learn today. Is be who you are for the glory of God. Father, I thank you for being so good.